Uh, whole business, first one is 2740, many Chapter 11, fire prevention and protection of code of ordinances relative to adoption of 2009 edition of the International Fire Code. It allows a more rapid access to the property without damaging the property. This key box system greatly does that. I think that we have not duly considered all the privacy and, and Fourth Amendment issues that come along with having the keys of your business or to your home on the front of your property. In this day and age, to have access to everybody's apartment. Let's say a city em government employee decides that um, they need a new Xerox copy machine. Who would be liable? Or they need a new printer or a new computer. What if a key is stolen? Now, you wouldn't think that anyone would do something like that, but we don't know. Apparently, this box is going to be universal. And that's going to have everybody's apartment keys. What if someone gets murdered or raped? Will the, the city be liable for that? Our job is to make sure property and people remain safe. If I have a fire, I don't think I'm going to worry about the cost of the door being broken down to get into my house to put out the fire. What gives you guys the right to mandate a, a, do an unfunded mandate on the citizens. This opens up a big can of worms into the intrusion of our uh, private property uh, and our rights. I believe it is our right to protect the citizens the best we can, and that's one of the rules of government. Giving up our rights for, uh, for your idea of what's best protecting us uh, is unconstitutional. That was something that will be decided by a higher authority than you or I. The Constitution is not an instrument for the government to restrain the people. It is an instrument for the people to restrain the government. We can't eliminate all risks in life because to have freedom, that involves <clears throat> risk. And the more laws you have, the less freedom you have. There's a lot of speculation on constitutionality, and I, and I speculate that the question of constitutionality has probably been asked. To me, not to think that the, the constitutionality of something has never been questioned. Yeah, I've thought of that. But, you know, it's never been decided by the judicial branch that it's unconstitutional to mandate this. Let's say something happens in a building, whether there are people in there or not and an alarm goes to the fire department and the fire crew arrives. Could be a false alarm, so do, they, do you I, want them to just tear down everything, go inside to find out there is nothing? Or, if you're out of town, they should just wait around? No, I say go in and tear it down because I have insurance for that kind of stuff. I'd still like to have the old-fashioned way and, sure. and I'd have everybody have access to my house. This ordinance in no way affects residential property. There's absolutely no effort to put lock boxes on my house. And I wouldn't let them. This seems to me to be a slippery slope. First you're talking about commercial buildings, then I hear triplexes, then duplexes, then it could go to single apartment dwellings, and then who's to say it would not go to residential? If you guys think that there's not more people than what's here tonight that are going to balk on this, you're wrong. I assure you, the next reading there's going to be a lot more people here. Merits of an idea does not depend on the number of people who hold that idea. If it's something unsafe, uh, we, the elected officials of this city, will do everything we can in the best of our abilities to protect the citizens. It doesn't matter how many people are in this room. We have to protect everyone. Tom, your last one. Bye. Six voting aye, one voting nay, Mr. Mayor. There will be a third reading for the next council meeting three weeks from tonight. And uh, you're free to talk to any of us between now and at the meeting also. Okay, thank you. Merits of an idea does not depend on the number of people who hold that idea.